I think Mosley has been really the face of this defense. He's been fantastic, sensational, yeah. and I believe this year he is at an All Pro year. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I would I would agree with you on on that respect and on CJ Mosley that he's wherever the football is, he is. He's fast. He's not afraid to hit somebody. Right? He's not he's not going to hit a guy and light him up per se, uh, but he's definitely going he's definitely going to be the spearhead. He's definitely going to get to the football, and I know. Like you said, with Quincy Williams, I thought, I mean, from I'm looking at some of my notes, I apologize, but no, Quincy no, no, Williams no. is, he's a very, very solid football player too. And it's, it's nice. It's, it's nice. Some, when you're, when you're watching film and you have to rewind it and go, okay, wait, which, which, which guy was that? Was that 56 or 57? Right. You, you have to kind of, the two of them, you know, play very well, you know, together. And, you know, Quan Alexander is, I think a very, he's very athletic. Um, he could, you know, the tackling and the physical part of the game, I think he doesn't quite match Quan, Ale- you know, Quan Alexander yet. Um, but uh, yeah, so, you know, like a guy like C- a guy, a guy like uh, Quan Alexander, I would, I would run at, at him, right. Mm-hmm. You don't want to run away from him because mm-hmm. he'll catch you. You just want to be physical and run at him. So, um, but yeah, it's the, but it's the whole group. I mean, you know, like you, you got Jermaine Johnson, a guy that I love coming oh, out of, you know, coming out too. of Florida state. You, you look at you know you look at what he does. He's just fast. He's powerful. He can bull rush. You know Michael Clemens. Um, you know what a fine Bryce, for them, you know, Bryce Huff. The now Bryce Huff. Yes, he comes in and he's you know he uses his hands real well as a pass rusher. And it's like well that's the kind of guy that Brian O'Neill struggled against um, or has struggled against in the past. And so it's like okay, how's that you know how's that matchup going to go? How much is he going you know going to be in the game? And I don't know. I mean you know. Um, and you know, like Tanzel smart, um, very stout, the double, you know, as uh, taking on double teams, holding the point. And that's the thing is you get guys like Tanzel smart in there. Um, Quentin Williams, Shepard holding on double teams or just making those double teams last a little bit longer. And then right behind you, you've got a guy like Mosley who can run like the wind. It's a problem, mm. right? It's, it's a big problem. And you know, it's, you guys are aggressive. They, they don't you guys they don't read and 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 let things happen and react. It's like you guys, you know, these guys are downhill, they attack. And I think I like that about your coach's mentality is is you gotta establish that first. You want these guys to be aggressive and get downhill. Um pe- you know, peel them back a little bit later, mm. I guess. Um, so I think that's gonna be a lot of it is coming down to how well do the Vikings manage the blitz, how well, how well do they manage the pressure? Um you know, how well do you do with your protections? Do you, you know, allow free runners? Um, you got your hot routes all straightened out, you know, and because you got to make a team pay. The only way to really stop a team from blitzing you is to burn them, mm. right? Is to really, really burn them. And that's the only thing that keeps defensive coordinators from wanting to blitz all the time. Um, and so, you know, you guys are going to blitz. You're what the second uh, percentage wise, second highest in the NFL. Oh, I mean, blitzing! Right. No, the Jets yeah. do not blitz. They a lot. don't blitz they, at all. They're the second least, I think. They, second least. Second yeah. least. Yeah, they don't blitz. No, the Giants are the one that what blitz the a lot. Je- yeah. What the Jets like to do is they like to bring up four guys and and play man to man defense. They're the best at, in the NFL at doing that, and they've blitzed the second least in the league, which is crazy. Okay. So, uh, which uh, you can use on your uh, your network on on your radio channel. I will. Broadcast. Yeah, I'm really. Yeah, that really looks good for the analyst, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's, it's the Giants. That I, don't, I haven't watched right. all the yeah. games. So. I'm glad so that, that we can help you, Pete. Well, I'm glad that we can help you. So I, I but well, uh, hey, that's yeah, that's that's the whole that's the whole benefit. No, this, right? absolutely. And I love listening to you. I, I've listened to you really since you've come on the show. I, I listen to. I like what I see with Minnesota. I think they're dangerous. Um, I think offensively they have uh, arguably one of the best wide receivers we've seen since Calvin yeah, Johnson. Yeah, uh, Justin's he's. He's unbelievable, and you just, you just like you you just want Kirk to throw him that fifty fifty ball, you yeah. know, just just give it up to him, just you know, make him, let him make a play. And I think most I, most of the time he does. I think Thielen is so important in this game if they plan to beat the Jets because the Jets already know that Jefferson's going to see, Jefferson's going to see the ball thirteen to fifteen times. Kirk Cousins loves looking his way, so expect yeah. that. Uh, I think Adam I, Thielen plays a big part of where this offense is going to go against this Jet defense. What I here's, I won't disagree with you on that. I mean, Thielen, you know, Thielen's going to get the one on one, so Thielen's going to have to mm-hmm. win, right? Mm-hmm. 
The guy that I think is the concern is TJ Hawkinson. Mm. And I, I really do believe a big part of, or part of why they brought him in was for the man to man type situation. Um, you know, and man to man is like, you know, there's different, there's different ways obviously to play. You could play like two man where you play like cover two, just man underneath, or you can mini package it with the safeties playing games or, you know, whatever, or play single high man to man and flood the underneath those kinds of things. It's we've struggled getting open in man earlier this season. Okay. So in until we figured it out and we're able to run some routes and different bunch formations and things that give, give that coverage issues. Um, yeah, we, we struggled getting some people open. And I think TJ is the answer to that only because he's such a big body. Hmm. And if you want to cover him with a linebacker, you know, good luck. If you, so it's kind of like, how do you, how do you deal with that? And the good, the good news for, for you guys is if TJ's catching the football, most of the time he's just moving the chains, hmm. right? He's not just, you know, Jefferson catches like Randy Moss. You catch, he had three passes, three receptions against Cowboys, three for touchdowns back on Thanksgiving in 88. It's like you, which pick, it's like pick the way you want to die, right? That's kind of the the Belichick thing is when he, the people use the phrase, make a team left-handed. It's like, okay, well, we got to kind of, you know, pick our, pick our battles here. And and I just think that TJ Hawkinson um, is going to be the, is going to be a big part of, of what goes on on Sunday, especially if we see a lot of man-to-man. Do you want me to defense. predict what's going to happen? Because I've watched the Jets play against pretty good tight ends, pretty speedy, good-handed tight ends. Uh, they're going to – when when if Minnesota gets into the red zone and when they get into the red zone, they're probably going to put a guy like Sauce on TJ Hawkinson. We've seen that this year. They like to do that. They like to put their big, tall, lengthy, speedy uh, – corner on there they do have a lot of depth on that corner cornerback yeah. side with Eccles and and obviously mm-hmm. DJ Reed who uh, people forget how great DJ Reed is Michael yeah, Carter Michael Carter is a top 15 quarterback in the league too percentage wise one of the better slot uh, corners in the league what a find by Joe Douglas by the way uh, finding him in the fourth or fifth round uh, from Duke so I I mean they have so many corners that they can evaluate and move around. That's why this is such a good matchup for both teams. I think it's yeah. going to be fun. Uh, it's going to. I. It's not going to be that high flying t- type of game that everybody thinks it's going to be. I don't think it's going to be a thirty to twenty 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 one. I don't think it's going to be like that. I think yeah. the game is going to be like twenty to seventeen, twenty four to twenty. That's where I think the game is going to lie. It's going to matter at the end of the game who wants it more and who is going to play down yeah. to the opponent that they're playing against. Yeah, and it's it, it's um, you've got a top scoring defense going against a, a you know a top scoring offense, a very good offense, right? So that's kind of the half of the game that everybody's going to want to see. Mm-hmm. It's it, that part of it. I agree with you. It's going to be very very interesting, and it's how many points can can the Jets put up. Uh, with Mike, what Mike White, and I think for for the Vikings, the big thing is going to be to make you know force Mike White into mistakes, mm-hmm. force him out of the pocket, make him feel uncomfortable. Not like a bootleg where it's you know whatever, but to get him to to make some mistakes because he has made them in the past. Yes, he and if you can do that and get a get an extra possession or two, that could you know that could change the game. And I think that's really what it's going to you know come down to because, well, I mean. We, we like to throw the football, mm. and I'll, even though I love Dalvin Cook, I think Dalvin Cook is still the heart and soul of this offense and, and really this team. Um, they, they, they like to throw the ball. Even if we're running the ball well, we still like to throw the football. So if, if you guys are able to contain the passing game, um, I don't know if we'll go away from it. You know, what I mean, I, I think <laughs> that's just Kevin O'Connell's you know, mantra. He's just like, we're, you know, we're going to throw the football. We're going to be a passing football team. And uh, yeah, that could be a long. It can end up being a long night for us if that's the case. We'll see. Yeah, I think uh, Cook receiving against the Jets. Uh, Robert yeah. Sala and his defenses have always had trouble with pass catching running backs, and we saw we saw the Patriots definitely expose that uh, in their two games yeah. this season. You get yeah, that's one. And, and that's do. and yeah. that's a byproduct of the of your man coverage. I mean, yeah. if you play man, you could take your you know line your receivers up tight, 
and just clear half half the field, right? You just you can just run everybody out of there and then have a running back check through. And now all of a sudden he's one on one with the linebacker in a lot of space. Mm-hmm. And yeah. So there's a lot of run after catch in that respect. And, and you're absolutely right when you say that they've, they've had, but if you're playing man to man, that's where you want to, if you're going to have problems in man to man, that's where you want them, mm-hmm. right. With check downs and running backs, not with receivers, <laughs> well, you yeah. know, like, like the Ravens had, have had in the past where they're just giving up, you know, 50 yard pass, 50, 70 yard passes all the time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, um, Dalvin cook. Yeah. He could have a, he could have a big day out of the backfield. I don't know. I mean, like I said, though, I think Dalvin's such a he's just such an important part. And um, for you guys and for the defense and how aggressive they are, you know, the play action is going to have to be part of it. 100 percent. It, it has it has to be part of it. The bootlegs, those kinds of things, they, it, the misdirection has to be part. But for misdirection to work, it's got it. You got to you got to you got to have some credit to it. So if you start running the football and you're not, you know, you're getting minus one, minus two, minus three, that kind of thing. Yeah. It, it's not going to work. We, the, the Vikings offense, we, we, we played so poorly against Dallas and, and one, we just played their game, right? We did nothing to take them out of their game. And we averaged um, on third down that night, we averaged about third and 13. Mm. Right. So you got Micah Parsons and, you know, it, yeah, you're going to let those guys for what third, how many third downs are there? 13, 14 mm-hmm. for, for that many plays. And when you're up by, you know, when you're up by two scores or whatever, just pin their ears back and rush the passer. Right. I mean, you can't, you, you, you just can't do that. Um, so they did a much better job against New England. And a lot of that was just being efficient on first and second down. Right. If the Vikings are facing third and four, third and five, uh, you know, yeah, we can live with that. But if it's if you're getting us in third and sevens, third and eights, third and nines, it, yeah, it could be it could, again, yeah, it could be another long night. Or afternoon. I don't know when the game's at noon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. afternoon. 